Welcome to Pins and Things! Just in time for prom, we are starting off our prom playlist with how to make a wrist corsage or a pin-on corsage for less than $2. And I have my mom here as a guest star. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the whole reason I want to show you guys how to do this is because it is so much cheaper to make your own than to buy it at the store. For example, the average corsage in our area at least costs over $25 and the average boutonniere is around $15. And once you learn this, you find out that you can do it for really inexpensive. Once you've got the supplies, you can reuse them over and over again. An average bouquet, I got three different bouquets here, but an average bouquet like this one is about $5. And you can get it at your local grocery store. You can yeah, still good. make great corsages and boutonnieres. We got it for $5 at Walmart, which you could make a corsage and a boutonniere for Two corsages and boot. Two corsages and a boutonniere for that five dollars of flowers. So that's what we're gonna do today. You're going to need some tool. It'll be in squares that you cut in half diagonally to be a, a triangle. It's about four by four. I've just got two different kinds here. It depends on what you have access to. You don't want a real heavy wire. It's got to be very flexible and easy to be able to get through and the this stems is of the roses. Painted floral wire and we will have a link in the description below on Amazon where you will be able to find it so that you won't have to go searching for some crazy wire that you don't know what it is. We will link it. Yeah. You're also going to need floral tape, and you can get this at Walmart. They have it there. There's different colors. There's also white. There's all kinds of different things. And one thing you need to know about floral tape is it's sticky and it stretches. And that's what makes it work so well in what you're doing because it holds everything together. The other thing you're going to need are some silk leaves. And the, the silk leaves, these I actually made because I didn't have any on hand. So I just cut up some silk flowers and made my own and glued the wire onto the back. To get started, we're going to have Becca start making these picks we call them. You're going to need a little piece of wire about three inches long. You're going to fold your tool so that it's folded up right here like this just a little bit. Can you see that? It looks like a sailor hat. <laughs> it does. You're going to put your wire through this part right here. Fold it in half and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it goes down. You want to leave the wire up a little bit around the tool like that. Okay and then you're going to take your tape, dart at the very top of that wire and wrap the tape around it. And the thing that you want to remember as you're doing this is you've got to pull it as you go and stretch that tape so that it wants to stick together. If you don't pull it and stretch it, then it's not going to stick. It'll just kind of come undone. Made a few of them already. So Becca, let's put they you to work like doing that. Fake flowers. They just add some a really nice sparkle to the corsage when you're done. When you pick out your flowers, you need to make sure that you have a variety. That's why I chose this because there's different sizes. Sometimes you want to have a little teeny tiny thing like this one does at the top and you want to have different colors that you can add in. I've got some darker reds in here. I feel like I'm on the Princess Diaries. Like I'm did you lose the wire? <laughs> stuff. <laughs> what did you lose? Uh, yeah, I lost the wire but now Good I can't see luck. it. You're gonna need a metal detector. These are another variation you can get that are called picks and they just go in between the flowers and stuff to give it more pizzazz. These are just pre-made ones that you can find at the store. So we're starting with a small flower and what do you need? I'm gonna need a leaf to go behind it like this and we're going to need one of those picks right there to go around Ta -da, it there. All done. Like this. You're starting to put together a little tiny miniature bouquet and then I'm going to grab just a tad Rig. bit of baby's breath and that's a lot of baby's breath and that's really full. You want to layer it so that they're different heights kind of and then you're gonna take your tape and just wrap it up like that. So tape together a flower, a leaf, a pick that we made, and baby's breath. It's just the beginning of your corsage. You have to do layers upon layers like this. Then you're going to start adding little flowers in that are just a little bit bigger. Here's the next size up. If you've got little pieces of nubs like that that are heavy and you don't want them in there, you want to cut those off. But you do need enough of a stem to add to this. And the wire underneath from your leaf really helps to stabilize everything. So you want to be able to have that in there. So you're just layering again like this. Different layers. Different layers, adding more and more. So we made a second one of them. It just has a leaf, a pick, and a small, small flower, like a bud of a flower. And now we're going to put it next to the side of it. And now we're going to tape them together. This has been so beneficial. We make these every year for prom. We've done weddings. We've done so many things with these. It is so much more inexpensive. At a point 
when you're adding all these things, it's going to start getting really thick. And you can't keep adding just thicker and thicker and thicker. So you get to a point where you have to start trimming out what you've got going there. So you're going to need a good pair of scissors that you don't mind destroying cutting the wire. And she's got really good scissors. <laughs> so now we're going to start adding in roses. You want to cut it at an angle, leaving enough of a stem that you can actually tape it to everything. Now there's a little secret that I have. This one's actually a really pretty rose. You see sometimes you get little nasty spots on your roses. What you're going to want to do is just peel that petal off till you get it to the point you want. You don't want to take too many off though because it can really damage the rose and it'll fall apart faster so you want to be careful with it. Next thing we're going to do is cut a little bit of wire. I'm going to put it through at the very top here and shove it to the other side and it'll want to kind of go weird places. You just have to be careful with it. Usually it goes through for it. It's fairly easy. Okay and then what you're going to do is take this wire and wrap it around this stem. And there's a really important reason why I do this. I've been at weddings where I've seen people that didn't do this beforehand and the whole top of the bud will just pop off on their bouquets or on their boutonnieres or corsages. And it's really for reason, embarrassing. For some reason the image that came to my mind was somebody hitting somebody with a bouquet. And roses were flying, flying everywhere. Along. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Or maybe it was my wedding. I can't remember. Now that the wire's on there, we are wrapping it with the floral tape. It also helps keep the moisture in the stem longer. Now that our rose is all prepped, we're going to add in a pick and a leaf and so, baby's breath. So she's building it in a way that the leaves are kind of framing the back of it, the baby's breath and flowers all the way up until the centerpiece, which is the rose. So it kind of just builds off of itself. Take a look at it and see where it looks like it's unbalanced and missing stuff. And you just add in what you need. And right now, our, our thing is just about done and we just need one little more flower and a little baby's breath to add to it. And I think that ties it in because it's got the big one behind the rose. Right. You want to make sure that some of your wire is coming down to the end. You may have to trim off some of the, the leaves or the stems up inside because you don't want those coming all the way down to the end. You just want wire at the very end. And what you're going to do is take a pencil or something round like this and you're just going to curl that around it to give it a little nice flare at the end. If you've got a sharp point on your wire you want to take the pliers and tuck it in and make sure that that's not going to poke anybody and hurt them. Next thing you're going to do is make a ribbon to go on this. This can be a little bit tricky but it's not as hard as it looks. You're going to loop the ribbon around like this and it's easier if you kind of pull it to the side because you want it to go different directions. When you're all done you won't know that that's the center loop because it'll just blend in with all the others so you kind of want them all to match. Now when you get to that point, you probably want a couple more just to even it out and make it really full. So I've got eight loops, well nine if you count the center one. What I like to do on the bottom, some people will just leave it like that and cut one thing. I prefer to have three that show at the end. So I make a giant loop at the bottom like this. So you're going to put the wire through the center loop and then you're going to twist it together just as tight as you can. Or eight, or eight. Okay, that's good. Now you want to make sure that it's really tight, otherwise your loops will come out. There we have a, a bow. Okay, now what about this big loop at the bottom? What you're going to do is you're going to cut it on an angle and then cut the one that attaches to the roll down here so that it gives you three nice little tags Doodle that hang bags. down, little ribbons that hang down. So the next thing is we're going to put that on there and tape it on just the same as the others. One thing you want to remember is at the bottom of your wire that's pokey and nobody wants to get poked with the wire so you're going to bend that back up into itself and rewrap the floral tape up over that so that it's not going to hurt anybody or poke anybody. All my life my mom has made these for us whenever we needed them and I've never actually sat down and watched her make them but they always to me look so complicated but just like the chocolate covered strawberries they're so easy you have so many beautiful elements that you're putting together I think it would be really hard to mess it up it's I true. really do the last thing you're gonna need to do is have some corsage pins on hand and you can get those in the same place that you do with floral supplies at Walmart or you can get them online. Basically they're just pins that have a white head on them. So they're like pimply. <laughs> some, some are long like this, some are short like this. I like to put my bouquets in a baggie then ziplock it and then 
blow it up <laughs> so, it so that it doesn't flowers. crush the flowers. Sometimes I'll even put a little mist of water in the baggie to keep it fresh and put it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I wanted to show you how to actually pin it on the right way. Can I pin it on you, Becca? Yes. I've watched other people do it and they always leave the pin at the end poking into somebody and it hurts. The easiest way that I've found to pin on a corsage, it usually goes on the left shoulder, right over the heart, kind of. What you want to do is hold it in place with your thumb, take your pin and pin it into the clothes and then down into the flower so that it's all within that tape. And then you do the same thing up from the bottom. Ow! Just kidding. <laughs> you snot. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. And that is not going to go anywhere. And when she hugs somebody, they're not going to get stabbed. But the truth is, I really was afraid she was going to stab me, but she didn't because she loves me, I think, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> After making this beautiful corsage, some people don't like to pin it on, so I want to show you guys how to make a wrist corsage. So you already make it exactly the same way, but you're going to need some elastic. And this is like special glitter elastic that you can just get in the sewing section. And I've already measured it around my wrist just where you want it to be and you will need to make it a little bit tight because it does have some weight to it if you want it to stay in the right place and not just fall down. I'm gonna hot glue it together or you can sew it together. This is just so that we can basically make a bracelet. In order to have this attached to that you've got to have this end not poking out because that's gonna look horrible. You're going to add a little bit more floral stuff only it will go the other direction on this end. To give it a more full look and not just a one-sided. That's right. You have to have some sort of wire in this or it will break. And the reason you have to do that is because you're going to hook it on in the wrong direction. And what I mean by that is normally this would be laying like this. You're going to face it against it like this. And then you're going to tape it on and then fold it back. A lot of people will try and do it the other way and it just makes it miserable. So it's good to use a needle and thread for this part, but I'm actually going to try and see if I can use hot glue just because that's what I already have on here. And you want to put it further up on the thing, not at the very end of the stem. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and also stay tuned because I will show you guys how to make a matching boutonniere to go with this very soon. If you want to see more of my really cool mom, then click over here to watch The Beach House and I will have some other bouquet ideas over here. <laughs> see, see you guys next time! time.